Hello. Welcome back to another pen talk. Thanks for tuning in. This video we're going to look at an ink. This ink. I would love to hear from any of my viewers who are familiar with this ink because I found it pretty much by accident. So um, Many of my viewers may know about the pen thing, which is a pen pop-up store, which is in uh, my town of Chester, New Jersey. The pop-up store recently moved from one of the uh, establishments in Chester to another one. It's just basically a block away. I hadn't visited it in the new location, so I went to visit it uh, last week. And it's a different setup. That's one of the interesting things about pop-up stores is they are pop up so they don't they change so I had to open up a drawer and a desk and I found this ink and I was immediately intrigued number one I never heard of this ink manufacturer never heard of an ink called jellyfish and a turquoise waterproof document ink made for fountain pens that had my attention so the first thing I did, obviously, was do a Google search. Much to my amazement, I found that Chris Sang had done a review of this ink a few months ago. I had missed the video. Shame on me. So I watched it and uh, learned a lot from it. But then I also Googled Scribes Inc found their website and found the contact information for John Marks. It's a one-man company, a company of one person. John Marks is retired and he lives in California and he, for, you know, has always been interested in fountain pens. He spent some time in Japan about the same time in the 70s that I did. So he needed and was interested in doing something different after retirement. So he said, let's make some ink got together with a chemist and made some inks. So this is his jar, which looks good for a ink jar. It's a jam jar, which John explained to me. He likes it because the cap seals very well. And it just takes a little bit of a turn. There's a nice little seal on the top of the cap. So that's nice. And one of the other things that hopefully is visible from looking at this and we'll take the cap off and it is a secure cap which is very very nice he's been doing inks for five years and five years later the inks still work great as you can see this is a very intense ink so to me when you first look at this ink to me it looks like blue milk and what is milk milk has suspended solids in it so there are two types of basic inks. One is dyes and one is pigments. Pigments are solids. Interesting shape. When I took off the lid over the camera, I spilled some ink and it spilled. So the nano pigments stay in suspension. Brownian movement basically the movement that you're going to get in the liquid just from thermal changes and the gyrations of the earth or whatever is going to keep these very very small pigment particles in suspension and also they don't clog fountain pens so this is the pen you may recognize it as the duck bill i just took the smallest nib i have which is the 0 0.7 i put the ink in the pen and I started writing. And I have to be very, very clear. This was a wow moment. I mean, that's incredibly intense color. Phenomenally good flow. I just was impressed. I mean, it's been a while since I've had an ink that's really blown me away, so to speak, and this one certainly does. 
So just from the mere color saturation and flow and the way it looks on the paper, I think there's a great fascination, at least from my viewpoint, with this ink. You're not going to get shading. You're not going to get sheen. But those two characteristics are interesting, but not necessarily repeatable with a fountain pen, normal writing. You know, you need to do special things to sometimes get those characteristics if they are one of the ink's characteristics. But as you can see from this blog here, this ink is a pretty saturated, really you intense color ink. And this is Fabriano paper, which I think is fairly ink friendly. I very seldom get bleed through, but that bled through pretty much 100% to the page two, about 50% to page three, about 20% to page four. And that's where it almost ended, but it got to page five. So that's a phenomenal amount of, of bleed through. So that's one of the deficiencies of this pigmented ink. So why is pigmented ink considered permanent? Because the pigment is designed to bond with the cellulose of paper and it creates a permanent bond. So you may ask Chris, why do you say that? Well, I tend to always put the proof in the pudding. So here's a chromatography. I just put that line of ink at the bottom of this filter paper, put it in paper. As you can see, it's a very, very consistent color. So then I let it dry for a day and I did the same thing with water and we see no movement whatsoever. I mean, I have to be very, very honest and very open to you. I have not had an ink that has done this before. So here's a gentleman who just started making inks as part of something to do after retirement and has really done a phenomenal job. So I just find that amazing. So you may ask, Chris, why do you find it amazing? So this is another pigmented ink that I picked up at the Boston Pen Show two years ago. Noodlers made some inks just for that show. You know, Nathan is great to promote pen lovers and he made these inks to get people to come to the Boston Pen Show at that uh, year. And so this is one of three. So this is the blue one. So this is just the same thing I did with the jellyfish. As you can see, it's a similar chromatography. But then I let it dry for a day, just like I did with the jellyfish. And this is what we got. I mean, there's still a nice permanent blue line there on the noodlers. But as you saw, there's, there's some pink that is spread. Whereas the scribes, there's zero spread. So that's just amazing from my perspective. So here's the noodlers mild standish blue. And as you can see, hopefully it has that same kind of blue milky color to it. Take off the cap and I'm going to try not to spill any this time. Inside it has that similar type of look. So to me that's a classic of pigmented inks. So here's some copy paper that I wrote on with the jellyfish ink. And two other of the Noodlers pigmented inks that I got at the Boston Pen Show. The green one and a purple one. If we turn this over you see a little bit of show through and a minor amount of bleed through with the scribes ink but when you go to the noodlers ink you'll see a, a, a lot more bleed through than you had with the jellyfish this has been already tested in water you can see kind of how the paper is crinkly so we're going to just do this again just to show you how good these waterproof inks are so this is Chris Sang did this and I think it's an excellent test because now you have it fully immersed in water. The paper is fully saturated with water and there's not much movement you can see. 
So that's the fun part. So when I talked to John Marks from Scribes Inc., he said he went to the LA Pen show a few years ago and he was doing his inks and he wrote on some paper and put it in a tank of water and let it sit there throughout the entire show and no change. So what got John into permanent inks? Well, apparently he started making inks and he approached some of his friends, doctors and lawyers, and they said, John, that's great you're doing inks, but I need a permanent ink. I need an absolutely permanent ink. So John got together with his friend, the chemist, and came up with a formulation to make a permanent ink. And from my experiences, he nailed it. I mean, this is phenomenal. This is extraordinary. So um, just to show you what's going on, you can see there's even after the second water, you're getting some movement on the Noodler's ink, but nothing on the Scribe's ink. So I'm really impressed. And this paper is over a week old, so that ink's had more than enough time to bond with the paper and the fact that it's already been dunked in water once. It's just a testimony of what Scribe's ink's able to accomplish, and I'm, I'm blown away. I think that's one of the things that really floats my boat, you know, gets me wired up. I mean, it's phenomenal. So there are so many new things going on out in our industry and so many new people joining and they're joining with a passion and a commitment and a level of quality, which is mind blowing to me. I figured I would be remiss if I didn't try some other Noodler's inks that are known for being bulletproof and waterproof. So this is uh, Black Eel. And as we see that water come up, we see no movement. That's pretty impressive. So that definitely is more bulletproof, permanent than the pigmented inks. Now we're going to do Blue Pond, the Plains of Abraham, another ink that I've enjoyed and used a lot. And we're trying that now. In the now we can see there's a little bit of color coming up off of there, but not a lot. Again, very permanent, very bulletproof. And now, last but not least, is Heart of Darkness, which was my first permanent noodler's black ink, and I still use it. So let's see how this one responds. Ah, interesting. Certainly not as permanent or bulletproof as I expected. I've let these dry for over four hours, so in theory that should be enough. I mean, there's still a lot of ink left there, but nowhere near like we experienced with the other two, the Black Eel and the Blue Upon the Plains of Abraham. So now we're going to do the Crescent water test. And we have uh, jellyfish added to the mix. And this is on Toma River paper. And it's dried for over four hours. So let's immerse it and see what happens. We'll see if it responds similar to what we saw on the chromatography. And um, I think we're pretty well there. Heart of Darkness is certainly not as water resistant as I had hoped it to be and expected it to be. But the Black Eel and uh, Blue Pond, the Plains of Abraham are certainly sticking their ground, which is what we saw on the chromatography. And of course, the jellyfish ink again is just staying there and not moving. So the chromatography is finished. And it's pretty well representative of what we see in the water test below. It looks like a little bit of blue upon the Plains of Abraham. You got a little yellow and stuff and a little <coughs> color moved between that and, and black eel, but certainly not anything like Heart of Darkness, but it's still a very permanent black line left on all three inks. And as we get back to 
our little water test here, we can see that the heart of darkness is definitely losing a little bit of color. But we'll do a little shaky shake. We'll lift it up. It's definitely readable, but certainly moved a little bit where the other inks stayed exactly where you put them, kept their color, and didn't bleed or go through. Flip it over. As you can see, Blue Pond the Plains of Abraham comes through Toma River paper. Um, Black Eel and Heart of Darkness are pretty good. You get a little bit of a show through. But again, as you can see, the jellyfish ink uh, does come through a little bit on even on Toma River paper, but not as much as the Blue Pond the Plains of Abraham. So you've seen the ink in like a medium to medium broad nib. So you might ask, how does it work in an extra fine nib? So I pulled this one out because I think this is about as fine a nib as I have. Has a clear feed, which now is uh, brilliantly colored by the jellyfish ink. And also this section was orange like the rest of the pen, but now it's turned into a, a dark color. So that's just, again, the intensity of the ink. So, as I expected, this ink works great in very fine nibs. Because of the incredible saturation, you still get a really good color. It's a little bit difficult to use this nib uh, right in, over the camera, but, you know, the flow is good. So, kudos again to John at Scribes. So I use the extra fine nib on copy paper because you can wonder whether an extra fine nib is going to minimize the bleed through and show through. As we flip it over, we'll see it works pretty well. You get a little bit of there where I put down a little bit more ink with the cross strokes, but the normal writing is working out well. So this is a great color permanent ink that with the right nib you can use on any type of paper. Wonderful. So I have more inks coming from Scribes Inks. He makes a cannabis ink which is apparently his number one seller and it does have a minor amount of THC in it but below that legal limit. And I also got a yellow permanent ink which I'm just dying to try because I just can't imagine how a yellow permanent can work. Because my experiences with yellow inks and that type have been disappointing because I think they've been a little bit watered down and not intense. So I'm looking forward to that. If he can do what he's done with, with this ink, I'll be very much impressed. So look forward in another couple weeks to a review of more of his inks. But this just works great. I mean, I've had this pen uncapped for a, a few minutes and it writes immediately. We don't need that other apostrophe. So, thank you for viewing. Hopefully you've enjoyed this look at something which might be new to you. I recommend checking out Chris Sang's video. I'll give you a link in my description. So, explore this wonderful world we find ourselves in. It's great. So, this is the end of this video. This color is excellent, so explore. Bye for now, until next time.